Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. In a previous video, I showed you all the parts you needed to build a solar repeater. And just in case you were wondering if it's solar or not, there's the solar panel. Today, I wanna to show you how to get the firmware that you need on this thing to make it into a mesh-tastic repeater. And really, it's just flashing, but it's a totally different way of flashing than you do with these Helltech H3 boards that are super popular. This is the Rack Wireless. Oh, it's upside down. This is the Rack Wireless board, and it's a different beast. Let's get to it. Oh, and before I forget, again, you're gonna to need to use a Chromium-based browser. So either Chrome or Brave or Edge, or probably Opera or something along those lines, but not Firefox. I'm a Firefox user. It hurts me deeply to do it in Chrome, but Chrome is the one that works because it has the serial support. Let's keep on keeping on. You are gonna need yourself a really good USB cable. It's gonna to need to do data and power. If you have problems, there are two things that it could be. Number one is it's the wrong kind of cable. It doesn't do data. Get yourself a data cable. And number two is on this one, you got to put it into DFU mode or device firmware update mode. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. We'll go over both of them in this video so that you don't get all tricked up on it. You go to the exact same website, flasher.meshtastic.org. And in the first box, you pick your device. And this time it is a Nordic and it is the Rack Wireless WizBlock 4631. If you look at the chip, it's gonna say 4630. That's the actual chip itself that is on top of the board. The board is the 4631 board that is then put onto the starter kit, the back plane, the empty back plane that's got all the sockets on it. So it's kind of a terminology nightmare there, but you want the 4631 even though your chip in big letters says 4630. Then you wanna to go to the middle, so it's kind of an ABC thing again. You wanna to go to the middle and pick the latest version of the firmware. Unless you have a reason to choose the alpha version of the firmware, go ahead and choose the beta version under stable that is the highest number that's there. And then you click flash. And this will tell you all of the enhancements and all of the bug fixes and all of the contributors. And if you're new to this, read it and kind of put in the back of your head that these things exist and, and so on, but don't try and figure out too much about it because there's a lot of stuff there as you saw. And then there is a link to the full change log and then we're just gonna hit continue. So enter DFU mode. So this is where you get into method number one and then we'll get into method number two, which is in this text here. For firmware versions later than 2.2.17, trigger DFU mode manually by double clicking the RST button. It is this little button right here next to your USB connector. We're gonna try the enter DFU button after I plug in my USB cable. All right, USB cable is plugged in. So I want to click the enter DFU mode button and see if that does it. When I do the enter DFU mode button, it's going to ask me what to pick. And I see this WizCore Rack 4631 board and it says that it is paired. And then all this other stuff here, this PolyFree is a headset from Polycom. The DJI mic is a microphone, not this one, but a different one, et cetera, et cetera. Since I'm trying to flash a 4630 board using the 4631 flash file, this one here that says... 4631 is probably the one I want, right? So I click that and I hit connect and it shows up. On any computer, the way that this works is it shows up as another drive letter. So on Mac OS, it just mounts right to a location. On Windows, you might get a drive letter like C, D, E, F, G, H, whatever. And on Linux, it'll show up as another mount point and you might have to mount it yourself, but modern versions of Linux will automatically mount these when they come up. And there, you can see that it's mounted and that's all you wanna do. You just wanna check to make sure that it actually happened. You don't even need to bring up this file box. And the next thing that you do is this download UF2 button here. Download or copy the UF2 file to the DFU drive. The device will automatically reboot when the transfer completes and we'll start with the new firmware. So I click the download button and you can see I have my firmware file name, firmware rack 4631. So another confirmation that we're doing it right. 2.4.25 and I am going to just click save and we're gonna see if that does it. One eternity later. On Mac OS, when I try to eject the drive, it ejects the drive and then the thing automatically reconnects. It's trying to be really smart. So when I unplug it, I'm gonna get an error message on my screen saying I didn't eject the drive properly. It'll be fine. And now I've unplugged the USB cable. And next up, I wanna press the reset button, which is right next to the USB port. And we have reset. And now we are connecting. Mine is called SRJ1 underscore F386. And then if you go into the configuration on your device, since this is supposed to be a solar repeater, you wanna choose the role. I've got mine chose as router client, but I wanna change that over to a repeater. And now my role is repeater. And then right here on your screen where you see all of the information, you can see right underneath the name to.repeater, it says connected to radio. 
Rack 4631, 2.4.25, beta 45303. And that is the firmware that we loaded on the device just now. So success. Last time I showed you how to do this on a Raspberry Pi running Linux. And then I also showed you how to configure your serial ports for Windows or Mac OS. This time it's not a serial port device. It's the same procedure for all three operating systems. So follow along in the guide, enter DFU mode. You either have to push the button on the screen or double tap the button next to the USB port on the board. And then it shows up as a drive letter and you just copy the file to it. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below. Otherwise, the video on how to build the solar repeater is right over here. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.